What's going on everybody? It's Johnny Blackman here and we are filming another episode of Mobile Suit Blackman. This is a video to kind of just clue you all in on what's going on. I want to say sorry for my apparent disappearance from YouTube, but I'm still here and this video is kind of to clue you all in on what's coming in store for the channel. Uh, as you can see, Behind me is my ridiculous backlog and kind of as a sign of good faith, I wanted to explain some of the projects coming up for the channel. We've got a lot in store, a lot of good kits to cover, and I figured since I'm already doing videos and clusters together, I could clue you in on some of the upcoming projects that will be clustered together based on my backlog. So uh, there's a couple things to explain also in addition to the kits and the backlog and all of that, um, I have moved. You will notice that the studio looks a little bit different. That's because everything has been moved, uh, which is a good thing because instead of having my painting and building and filming all in different locations, it's all gonna be centralized. So that's a plus for me to get things done quickly and more efficiently. And there's no real downside other than having to pack up all of my stuff and get the kids brought over here safely. And over here meaning I cohabitate with my girlfriend. So everything is in one place, that's great. Another positive is that in the time since the last video and now I've picked up a sponsor, the awesome folks at Show Me What You Bought, AKA iBuildRobots.ca have offered to lend me their support and Willer is an awesome guy, so if you find yourself needing to hunt down some special kits, you can use my discount, MSB12, with iBuildRobots.ca, and their site is Show Me What You Bought. So thank you so much to them for supporting the channel and what I do. And again, a big thank you to all of you for watching and supporting the channel this far. So let's get into what's going on with the backlog. Okay, so we are starting with the real great kits. I'm just basically going to try to go through and be as organized as I can with this because there's a lot of kits across a few different grades, but you know me, you know that I love real great kits. So starting with the Seed Destiny kits, we are going to take a look at the Strike Freedom real great kit along with the Companion real grade P Bandai expansion for the Strike Freedom Effect Wing or unit effect wing of the skies expansion so those are basically the effect parts for the strike freedom wings and we're also going to look at the destiny gundam and not just the standard release of destiny gundam instead i got my hands on the destiny gundam hind weston fliss color version shout out to my man psycho seer for hooking me up with this along with the effect parts the wing of light effect parts for the destiny gundam that are compatible with this color swap so we've got the standard release strike freedom and the uh, limited expo destiny gundam that we're going to take a look at those are very very cool i haven't seen much of the real grade destiny gundam hind less than fliss so it's nice to see this in real grade form i've seen the high grade on a few different videos so that is that be excited for that from gundam seed destiny Alright, next up is also from Gundam Seed Destiny. We've got the Force Impulse, a fairly newer real grade, but very excited nonetheless. And the Sword Impulse, this is the Premium Bandai, uh, the, I, I would hope the first Premium Bandai release from this base kit. Maybe we'll get the Blast Impulse, we'll see. But the Sword Impulse Gundam and the Force Impulse Gundam, both from Gundam Seed Destiny. And combined with the Strike Freedom and the Destiny Gundam that will round out the real grade kits from Gundam Seed Destiny. So look for those. So next up for real grade kits is the set of Gundam Seed Astray kits. We've got the standard release Gundam Astray Red Frame, which you can pick up now and look around your local hobby shops or online. And not one, but two premium Bandai kits from the Astray line. We've got the Gold Frame Amatsu Hana along with the 
companion the Gundam Astray Gold Frame Amatsu. Now, the Amatsu is not to be confused with the standard release Re Amatsu. I believe there's a couple of different part differences, mainly in the feet, but it's very similar. I was very happy to get this kit because I do not believe it's had a reissue. It was a 2017 T Bandai kit and it's been difficult to get my hands on, but I have it, so this is very cool. The Gold Frame Amatsu and the Gold Frame Amatsu Hana from the Gundam Seed Astray line. Next up in Real Great Kits, we are getting to the Gundam 00 series. Now, I've already built the Real Great Axia that you've seen converted into the Avalanche Dash with the third party expansion, and I've already completed the double o riser but i've yet to feature it in a video so we're going to do a set of videos on the kits the real great kits from gundam double o and that will also include the double o quant i've yet to build this but i've got this here very jazzed to see this as a standard release and aside from this we've got the double o gundam seven sword g inspection now there are two different premium bandai releases for the Seven Sword in real good form. You've got the standard Seven Sword, but you've also got the Seven Sword G Inspection colors, which is basically that reddish orange colored version of the Seven Sword. And we've got the Estrella Type F from the uh, not the television series, but the I don't know. I don't know because I'm less familiar with the Gundam 00 universe outside of the. TV series, but yeah, the Estrella Type F. Uh, this is also kind of a hard to find kit now because it hasn't had a reissue for Premium Bandai US, but I've got my hands on it. I believe there are a couple of different part swaps between the uh, head armor and the waist section. So look out for these two very cool Premium Bandai kits. Next up are the Crossbone Gundams, the X1 and the X2. Of course, the X1 is a newer release. It is a standard release, so you can go and grab this. And the Crossbone X2 is the Premium Bandai exclusive. It was released on Premium Bandai US, so you may see these floating around in the secondhand market, and if you can, I'd highly recommend scooping it up. This is a well-reviewed kit for a real grade, being that it's newer, it's definitely easier on the hands to pose and manipulate however it is very small so we're going to check this out and see how they look side by side these are the crossbone x1 and x2 maybe just maybe in the future we'll get a real great full cloth but until then these are nice to have okay so we have the next couple of real great evangelion kits i was very Jazz to see that they were changing the real grade line to include more than just Gundam kits and I have built the first three real grade Evangelions, the Unit 1 DX, the Unit 0 DX kit, and the Unit 2, and now we'll be adding the Unit 8 Alpha and the Mark 6 to the lineup. Also, I'll be checking out this Kotobukiya kit, it is the 1100 VTOL featured in the rebuild. So, this is not my typical fare, it will need to be completely painted. Uh, but hey, it will be a very cool addition to the set of real great Evangelions. We'll also be on the lookout for the Unit 3 with the shield that is dropping later this year. I love me some Evangelion, so we're basically gonna collect them all and take them all through the video process, starting with these two and the VTOL from Kotobukiya. So to keep it going with real grade kits, I am stepping a bit back to some earlier real grades and looking at the GP01 and the GP01 full burn-in from Stardust Memory. Stardust Memory is a personal favorite and as of recording this, it is 2021. This is the 30th anniversary of Stardust Memory. However, Bandai has neglected to give us anything new, so I'm taking it upon myself to revisit Stardust Memory. And we're building these kits in honor of Stardust Memory's 30th anniversary. I do have the high-grade 
GP03 from the Dendrobium kit. However, I neglected to complete and paint that, so we'll be adding this to the mix. In addition to these real grade GP01 kits, we're going to take a look at the New Zale and the GP02 type MLRS. This is the version of the GP02 with those extra extra pew pews on the backpack which is very cool we have the gundam base limited unicorn gundam perfectibility and the sananju i know the sananju is going to be a bit finicky but hey i've built enough real grades to manage this finicky little beast it should look very very cool with its highly glossed armor and of course the Unicorn Gun Perfectibility was the big ticket item last year and this year in 2021 at the US Online Gunpla Expo. So hopefully you got your hands on this. It features the Hyperbeam Javelin from the Full Armor Unicorn Gundam and the Armed Armor Expansions from the Banshee as well as both of those Armed Armor Backpacks with the Phoenix Gundam, so it's basically the combination of all of the best of the three units in one kit. So we are excited to build both of these to feature together from Gundam Unicorn. These are two Premium Bandai real grade kits that were offered recently by Premium Bandai US. The Zaku Mine Layer and X Repair 3, and the Mine Layer will be yet another real grade. Zaku variant to add to the collection. I am a fan of the tan color and the interesting backpack, so while I do have a bit of Zaku fatigue, I will get to this kit and enjoy bringing it into the fold, as well as the Xe Repair 3. It will be a good representation of the Axia, which I did sacrifice to build the Avalanche Dash, so we will be bringing back the Axia along with its GN long rifle, which is very cool. So look out for these two. So with the release of the real grade high new Gundam upon us, it'll be a great time to revisit basically one of the best real grade kits, the real great new Gundam, which I've already featured. And I'll go ahead and add on these heavy weapon set expansion parts while I feature the High New Gundam as well. So I will probably film those two together. If not, I'll be filming the High New with the real, the high grade Nightingale. But in any case, it's a very exciting time to be into the real great kits and we'll definitely be revisiting the New Gundam with the expansion set. This was offered through PBandai US. So you hopefully got your hands on it. If not, maybe you can find it from a reseller. All right, we finally got ourselves a TV version of the Wing Gundam in real grade form. I have taken a look at the other real grade Gundam Wing kits, so this is a nice addition to the real grade Wing Zero EW and the real grade Wing Zero. And yeah, the TV version is a step away from what is typical of the real grade kits. Uh, specifically, we've been given the Kotoki redesign, so this is a nice change of pace, and I'm glad that we're getting this. Perhaps we will use this frame to get a future release in the form of Epion, fingers crossed, but I'm hopeful. And now for something completely different, we are going into the land of both Kotobukiya and Death Stranding. I'm a huge fan of Hideo Kojima's games. I've been playing them basically all of my life and Death Stranding is the most recent. We've just seen the advent of the Death Stranding director's cut. So by the time I have filmed this video, the director's cut should have been released for the PlayStation. This is the reverse strike in 1 12th scale by Kudobukiya and the Ludens Frame Armed Girl Black version. They are in scale with each other, and they are also in scale with the future release of the Figma of Sam Porter from Death Stranding. So, in addition to the Ludens and the Reverse Strike, we'll have the Figma for Sam Porter later this year. 
very cool. I have finished building both of these kits, so this will probably be coming to an episode of Mobile Suit Black Man sooner rather than later. But definitely, definitely recommend either of these builds. They are very fun and a great change of pace from Gunpla. That's just my quick review, but we will definitely be checking these out soon. We are now moving on to high grades, and Advance of Zeta has been getting a number of very cool releases in the past couple of years. The Advance of Zeta line has basically gone exclusive to Premium Bandai due to the licensing shenanigans, but that's fine by me. I'm not the biggest fan, so I decided to limit myself to the biggest and boldest entries, the Hazenthly Raw 2 and the Hazenthly 2 Raw. Now, this is the Hazenthly Raw 2 as well as the booster for the Hazenthly Raw 2. And this is basically at the time of release the furthest in the Hazenthly line that you evolve from the TR1. So, in a nutshell, this is the big and bad TR1 with its booster. And we are going to also look at the Hazel Custom, which is the simplest form. The Hazel is basically the simpler, simplest, simple <laughs> form. The Advance of Zeta line is very complicated complicated with a lot of interchangeable and switchable sections and munitions and expansion parts which is the nature of the manga but we'll be taking a look at the most scaled down TR1 and TR6 so these are the Hazel Custom expansion parts the expansion cruiser and the Hazen Thule Ra 2 and we also have the Hazenthly 2 Raw with its booster expansion that we'll be adding to it. And again, it is the, at the time of release for model kits, the most expanded and largest version of the TR6 set of AOZ kits evolving from the Wound Wart. So we'll be building the Wound Wart along with it. So I've got the well, for lack of a better term, the Minimalist Wound Wart and the Hazel and the Super Califragilistic Hazenthly Raw and Hazenthly Raw 2. And those will be very cool. They will be my basically only, only means of having access to the Advance of Zeta line. So I will be making the best of the high grade kits to explore the One Year War, I'm a huge fan of the UC and specifically the events of the One Year War. So we'll be exploring, expanding my collection of Earth Federation kits by building the G Armor, the G Fighter combination of the RX-78 II with the G Fighter. In addition to these two kits, we will also be looking at the High Grade Beyond Global G3 version with the classic G3 colors. And again, this will help us expand our vision and perspective on the One Year War from the perspective of the Earth Federation. So this is very cool. This is a limited kit. And if you can find it, grab it, the Beyond Global. And as we've seen from other videos this is already, very, very cool, excellent to pose, fun to build. And at this point, an instant classic. In addition to the Earth Federation, I also want to revisit the Xeon mobile suits featured in the One Year War. I've yet to see a goof custom in real grade form, so we're going to go ahead and go with the goof custom from the OHMS team. That's right, Captain Norris's goof custom and the DOM test type. Again, similarly to the gun cannon I wanted a modern more detailed DOM than what was offered with the high grade line so I'm using the DOM test type from the mobile suit Gundam the origin MSD 
and we're going to paint this as though it was the traditional Dom colors featured in the One Year War from the original Mobile Suit Gundam. So look out for those as well as the 1144th Dop Fighter. This is my latest EX model and it will require a bit of paint and detailing to bring it to life, but we will have yet another vehicle. This kit comes with a 1100 DOP in addition to the 1144th. I would have loved to have gotten Garma's DOP, but Garma is a sucker and so is his DOP, so that's okay with me to have at least one of these. These are very cool, a little tough to find, so be on the lookout if you are interested in having a scaled DOP in your collection. This kit is the G Defensor and Flying Armor featured in Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam. This kit, interestingly, is compatible with the real grade Mark II, either the Titans or the AU. So I'm going to be combining this with the real grade Mark II, in essence, to make our own Super Gundam. And that's really about it. I'm not sure if I'll purchase the Mark II Titans to build that and have that separately from my AU real grade Mark II, which is probably the case. Um, but yeah, look out for this. This is just another bit of lore to add to the 1144 scale Zeta kits in my collection. Very cool to have this. This is definitely tough to find. This is a premium Bandai kit from 2012, and I believe it has not been reissued, so definitely keep your eyes peeled. The one that I found is new, but the box has had about nine years of wear on it, so. And if you know me or know the channel, you know that I love my thick kits and of the high grade variety. This is one of the best. I've heard a lot of great things about this Kshatriya. We will definitely be giving this a good look at. This is featured in the Gundam Unicorn OAV piloted by Marita Cruz. It features those enormous binders inspired from the Queen Mansa and yeah. There's not enough I can say about this design and I'm hoping to enjoy having this kit in my collection. I'm assuming I will be painting this kit and probably detailing it with some Delphi decal, so stay tuned for this kit. It will probably be featured alone in its video due to the size and nature and detail of the kit, so yeah, I finally got the Kshatriya. Bang, bang, boom, we have yet another Char mobile suit, and this is a big one. This is the biggest one high-grade Nightingale featured in the manga version of Char's Counter-Attack. This is the companion to the real-grade High New Gundam also being released this year in 2020. If you can hear, I've already started preparing this kit for paint. I'm very, very hyped for this build. It is going to be a very, very, very large 1144 scale kit. This is already sold out in Japan. It is sold out in the US. This is going to be tough to find for a while. So if your local vendor has them in the store, if you find your favorite online vendor has them available for pre-order, do not hesitate. It's a little pricey for a high grade, but well worth it based on the size. 2021 has been good to us with big kits. These are the Cassie Gundam and the Penelope Gundam with the Fin Funnel Effect Parts. This is a limited set, so once this is gone, this is gone. I do not believe they're going to reissue this set. I was happy to get this, and it does feature the Funnel Effect Parts which make this kit especially unique. These are not available for purchase separately. And these two kits go alongside the release of Hathaway's Flash, the first in the trilogy of movies from the perspective of Noah Hathaway, famous son of Bright Noah, 
and this is going to be a blast. We're going to probably be painting these kits and adding each a set of Delphi decals. I'm going to need to spend a considerable amount of time because these are two very large high grade kits. So look out for these in an episode at some point, maybe not soon, but definitely coming up. Now this is a master grade kit, which is not typical for me, but this was sent to me by my good friend Zaku Zero, AKA the plastic pusher, AKA the clout pusher. He is a wonderful guy, definitely a master painter and blessed me with this kit. I'm going to be comparing this with my paint job on the high grade Barbatos. And yeah, I don't think there's any issue with building this kit and adding it to my collection of 1144 scale if and only if because at the time of release this is probably regarded as one of the best master grades ever produced so i'm incredibly excited and honored that he sent this to me such a great guy and such a great kid this is the master grade barbatos from iron blooded orphans Last but not least in the backlog are the mega size kits. I told myself that I could not ignore the detail and size per comparing these to perfect grade kits. They come in much cheaper and with an equal amount, if not more surface detail, which is important to me. So as a result, they will be getting custom paint jobs. The First is the Mega Size RX-78. We will be giving this the real type colors as well as gold decals from Delphi decals. So this will be an exciting build to have as a hallmark in the collection. And the Mega Size Zaku 2, not the Char Zaku 2, but the standard Zaku 2, interestingly, Char Zaku 2 does not have the bazooka, so if you're trying to decide on which to search for, I recommend seeking out this one because it does come with the bazooka. You can paint this to look like Char's if you like. Uh, I'm choosing to give this a custom color scheme similar to the Desert Zaku or Zaku Cannon instead of tans and browns, as well as using the Shin Matsunaga custom water slide decals for this kit so look out for these two to be special special kits with special paint jobs and yeah in addition to these two i have given myself the gift of ordering the rx78 f00 aka the yokohama walking gundam they have produced for the yokohama factory the 1 148 scale mega sized Yokohama Gundam so I have that on order from side 7 it should be here fairly soon and that will be a straight build to represent the Yokohama Gundam as it is seen at the factory very excited for those three mega sized kits and I cannot tell you when I'll get to them but they are in the backlog and they are already been planned for decals have been purchased and they are just waiting for me to get on them. This is the high grade feed freedom unit with the Freedom Gundam. I have been promising you all this kit for a while and rest assured we are coming around to the home stretch of completion. I am finished with the base paint for this kit and ready to add the details and panel lining and decal so look out for this sooner rather than later but yes I'll include this in the backlog just because it is incomplete but we're almost there and be looking for this very soon in an episode coming up.